On today's episode, one supersonic jet company flies, another crashes. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. For the entire 120-year history of aircraft development, the path forward has been simple to define. Bigger, faster, higher, and more importantly, more profitable. Civil aviation, specifically passenger carrying service, struggled until the technology allowed airplanes that were fast enough, comfortable enough, and had a low enough seat mile cost to make air travel a paying proposition. In the 1960s, it was widely expected that the quantum leap in speed and comfort offered by first-generation jets like the 707 and the DC-8 would be followed by supersonic travel. Major American airframers researched this heavily, with the Boeing 2707 concept coming closest to fruition, but it was the European Concorde that carried passenger-carrying supersonic flight into service. The aircraft was an engineering masterpiece, but supersonic service was a commercial failure due to high fuel burn, high seat mile costs, and critically, restrictions on supersonic flight over land due to sonic boom. Sonic boom and high fuel burn are still characteristics of supersonic flight, but new technologies now promise to address both issues. High fuel consumption on Concorde was a direct result of the use of afterburners on its Olympus engines to maintain Mach 2 speeds, but the current crop of proposed aircraft will operate at slightly slower speeds and will supercruise, meaning the engines will operate dry without afterburner. This addresses the fuel burn problem, but sonic boom has proven more difficult to conquer. A very carefully shaped airframe has proven to be the answer to this issue, and Boom Supersonic is flying the company's XB-1 test vehicle to validate design principles for their production commercial aircraft called Overture. Meanwhile, another supersonic commercial aircraft startup, Exosonic, has shut down before reaching the prototype stage. Exosonic was developing a novel design in both the supersonic passenger carrying and drone version aimed at military applications. The company had flown a subscale drone test article called Trident and was working with both the USAF and NASA on drone and commercial supersonic technology programs. The reason for the shutdown was a lack of sufficient investment to carry the company forward to production, the fundamental challenge for aviation startup companies worldwide. Major airframers like Boeing and Airbus have maintained interest in supersonic commercial aircraft, and majors who have not built commercial aircraft for decades, such as Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, maintain active research projects. To date, whether at commercial transport scale or as a business jet, no company has developed a certifiable aircraft. Will Boom Supersonic be the first? Well, that firm has several advantages. Boom has over 100 orders from existing airlines and an airplane with a projected top speed of Mach 1.7, reducing the significant problems of frictional heating in airframe structures and power plants compared to Mach 2 plus speeds. The firm also has the advantage of advanced software-based design and simulation tools to reduce testing and development costs, as well as a portfolio of new composite materials that are lighter, stronger, and easier to fabricate than traditional aircraft alloys. Boom is pursuing a very unusual approach for a startup airframer in that the company is simultaneously developing airframe, power plant, and the manufacturing process to build the airplanes, which in the aviation industry has traditionally been a high-risk approach. The church and state separation of jet engine manufacturers and airframe builders dates to the 1940s for good reason. But one consequence of this separation is that large airframers need to specify an engine optimized for their project with the prospect of enough orders to justify power plant development costs. Other supersonic transport startups have designed around off-the-shelf engines to avoid this problem. But by bringing engine development in-house, Boom can optimize the power plant to the airframe. In aerospace, the real propellant is money, and Boom appears to be the current leader in supersonic transport development. Exosonic joins a long list of aerospace startups that failed not because of technological shortcomings, but because of a lack of investment dollars. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.